Uh, we'll go ahead and call to order our regular session of July 23rd, 2019. The first order of business we have, the opening prayer and pledges of allegiance to the flags of the United States and the state of Texas. I have the privilege this evening, so I'm going to come down to the podium and ask if you'll join me in standing. What I'm about to read is uh, an excerpt um, from the prayer that was offered before the uh, House of Representatives on the 28th of September of 2001, written by Reverend Walter Rossi. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Lord, in times of trepidation, we look to you for comfort and strength. Your consolation is known to us through the compassion and self-giving of our citizens. Your strength is realized in our nation's spirit of unity and patriotism. We turn to you in trust for wisdom and guidance, a wisdom derived from reverence and esteem for your word. Preserve our nation, a beacon of freedom and independence, a model of charity and forbearance. Give this legislative body inspiration, certitude, and right judgment. May their actions be undertaken with zeal and tempered with concern. Protect the men and women of our nation's armed forces. May those who defend and preserve this great land of promise know the assurance of your vigilant care. Have compassion on us all and show mercy in our limitations as we forever strive to ensure your blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all peoples. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. All right, the next item we have this evening, uh, announcements of upcoming city events. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, thank you, Mayor. On Friday, July 26th, it's going to be a movie in the park. It's going to be Incredibles 2. It'll be at Rhine Valley Park. It'll uh, begin at 7 p.m., and the movie will begin at sundown. On Friday, August 2nd, is going to be the City Council Budget Retreat over in the Community Center, which will begin at 8.30 a.m., Saturday, August 3rd, is National Watermelon Day. At Pick it will be at Pickerel Park Pool at 12.30 p.m. On, uh, let's see, sorry, I skipped Friday. August 2nd is going to be TML Region 7 meeting in the City of Eagle Pass. And uh, if you're interested in attending, please contact the City Secretary's Office. And the filing for Shirt City Council and Mayor election for November 5th of 2019 began yesterday. And it will go through... Um, finally, we'll go through Monday, August 19th by 5 p.m. And then we'll be back here on Tuesday, August 6th for the next regularly scheduled city council meeting at 6 p.m. That's Very good. It. Thank you. Next up, announcements and recognitions by the city manager, Dr. Brown. Uh, All right. Announcements and recognitions by the mayor this evening. Nothing this evening. Uh, next on the list is hearing of residents. Do we have anyone sign up this evening? We did not have anyone sign up, so we'll move directly into our consent agenda items. Item number one, minutes, consideration or action regarding the approval of the minutes of the meeting of July 9, 2019. Item number two, ordinance 19S15, an ordinance by the City Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, to approve a specific use permit to allow an automotive repair major land use on approximately 1.5 acres of land generally located 1,500 feet south of the intersection between IH 35 and FM 1103, more specifically described as 5702 FM 1103, City of Shirts, Guadalupe County, Texas. Item number three, ordinance 19S16, an ordinance by the City of Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, to change the street name of Wiederstein Road to Cibolo Valley Drive for the portion of Wiederstein Road from Cibolo Valley Drive to the frontage road of Interstate Highway 35. Item number four, resolution 19R89, a resolution by the City of Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Hanson Aggregates LLC for the lease of 200 acre feet of Edwards Aquifer permitted water. Item number five, resolution 19R85, a resolution by the city council of the city of Shirts, Texas, authorizing expenditures in excess of $50,000 
with Deere and Company in fiscal year 2018, 2019, and other matters in connection therewith. Item number six, resolution 19R90, a resolution by the City Council of the City of Church, Texas, authorizing an amendment of an interlocal agreement for dispatch services with the City of Cibolo, Texas, and other matters in connection therewith. Item number seven, resolution 19R91, a resolution by the City Council of the City of Church, Texas, authorizing expenditures with Siddons Martin Emergency Group totaling no more, no more than $345,000 for equipment, maintenance, and repairs during the 2018, 2019 fiscal year and other matters in connection there with item number eight resolution 19 r86 a resolution by the city council of the city of shirts authorizing the selection of patio brown and hill for financial audit services item number nine resolution number 19 r92 a resolution by the city council of the city of shirts texas appointing members to the alamo area council of governments regional emergency preparedness advisory committee and other matters in connection there with item number 10 resolution 19 r88 a resolution by the City Council of City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing expenditures in excess of 50000 but not to exceed 160000 in fiscal year 2018-2019 with T.F. Harper & Associates, a buy board purchasing cooperative vendor and other matters in connection therewith. Item number 11, resolution 19R93, a resolution by the City Council of City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing additional expenditures with, let me sure I get it right, with the Ovid Bell Press Incorporated totaling no more than $119,571.48 for printing services and other matters in connection therewith. Item number 12, resolution 19R87, a resolution by the City Council of City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing the an, an interlocal agreement with Shirts Housing Authority for cooperative purchasing services and other matters in connection therewith. And item number 13, resolution 19R82, a resolution by the City Council of City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing expenditures with O'Reilly Auto Parts totaling no more than $65,000 for vehicle and equipment parts and supplies during the 2018-2019 fiscal year and other matters in connection therewith. Are there any items that needed to be pulled and considered individually? Mr. Davis. Uh, yes, sir. Items four and six. Item number four with regard to an agreement with Hanson Aggregates. Item number six, dispatch services with the city of Cibolo, Texas. Any others? I'm going to move from the chair that we approve the remainder of the items with the exclusion of items four and six on second. consent. Second. Second. So, second from Mr. Edwards. Any other comments, questions from council? And then I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven eyes, no nays. We'll go to item number four. Resolution by it's resolution 19R89, a resolution by the City Council of the City of Church, Texas, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Hanson Aggregates LLC for the lease of 200 acre feet of Edwards Aquifer permitted water. Mr. Davis? I was just wondering, uh, looking at our, our packet, I've got to jump to that real quick. Um, I was wondering how many total different leases we have with regards to our. Uh, Edwards aquifier water at this time? Currently, we only uh, lease water to one other uh, entity this year, which was uh, LB Hoist. We did 110 acre feet, and this will be the second one for this year. And have we, uh, have we leased to uh, Hanson before? Yes, sir, we have. And these are all one year? Yes, one, this one, one will calendar go, year max uh, at a time. It'll, it'll go from uh, as soon as it's approved till December 31st. Thank you. That's it. That's all I have. Anyone else? There a motion to approve resolution 19R89. So moved. Second. A motion from Mr. Larson, a second from Mr. Edwards. Any other comments, questions from council? And then I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Item number six is resolution 19R85. And I'm sorry, no, 19R90. Resolution by the City Council of City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing amendment of an interlocal agreement for dispatch services with the City of Cibolo, Texas, and other matters in connection therewith. Mr. Davis? Uh, again, uh, this is a, an ILA for, we do dispatch for a wide ranging area. This is just an ILA with Cibolo? Yes, sir. We dispatch for their police fire. Police and, fire. and who else do we do, we do dispatch services with? Oh, that's all. Just, just Cibolo? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll pass all my other comments to Dr. Brown at a later time. Thank you. Any others? Is there a motion to approve that resolution? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Edwards, a second from Mr. Gutierrez. Any other comments or questions from council? And then I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes and no nays. The motion carries. Discussion and action items. Uh, first one we have this evening is Ordinance 19B17. Bond captions are my favorite to read. 
don't know if you can see it out there. It's a half a page. Sorry, it usually yields good things. Ordinance 19B17, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of City of Shirts, Texas, combination tax and limited pledge revenue certificates of obligation series 2019 provided for the payment of said certificates by the levy of an ad valorem tax upon all taxable property within the city and further securing said certificates by a lien on and pledge of the pledged revenues of the system, providing the terms and conditions of said certificates and resolving other matters incident and relating to the issuance, payment, security, sale, and delivery of said certificates, including the approval and distribution of an official statement pertaining thereto, authorizing the execution of a paying agent registrar agreement and an official bid form, complying with the requirements of the letter of, of representations previously executed with the depository trust company, authorizing the execution of any necessary engagement agreements with the city's financial advisors and or bond council, and providing an effective date. This will be a first and final reading. Mr. Walters. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, as you know, we uh, went out for bid for um, $7.9 million in CO debt uh, this morning. We do a competitive bid process where we set the amount and we let um, any entity that wants to place a bid on those uh, to do so. Um, and tonight I have uh, Mark McClaney from SAMCO, who is our investment advisors, to go over the results of that sale with you, or that bid with you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's good to be here. I put at uh, Udias two quick handouts. These are hot off the press since we were taking, as James said, a bids today. Uh, about six weeks ago, you authorized a notice of intention resolution outlining uh, that you intended to accept and consider an ordinance authorizing $7,925,000 for various projects. Uh, we went out for bid today, re received seven bids. Uh, you'll see this on the first cover page here. Uh, point out that Raymond James Associates was the high or the best bidder. Their interest rate was 2.356%. The cover bid, the second place bid, was Piper Jaffrey at 2.358%. So three thousandths of a percent difference on $7 million, over nearly $8 million. I also placed at your dais, and one of the reasons we get these rates that we're getting is your bond rating. Uh, your staff, your, your, your executive committee met at a conference call with the rating agency. They did an unbelievable job of communicating the wonderful things that go on at Shirts and are going on forward looking and have gone on in the past. We came back with the second highest possible rating at AA plus. That's what we've had. It's where we want to be. Of course, we'd like to get a AAA. Uh, I point this out, read through this report. There are few reports that are as good as this anywhere in the state of Texas. It's worth reading, seeing what the strengths are, and you all have lots and lots of strengths. Um, with this type of bond rating, we get this type of rates, and they do go hand in hand. Ten years ago, we didn't have the fund balance that we did have. We didn't have the professional management that you have. We didn't have the fiscal policies that you have. We were pulling down on fund balances at the time, and we struggled getting five bids. We're getting seven, and they are coming from throughout the country. So how you all have been operating your finances, what your staff has done, and, and this is a broken record. I've been sharing this with you all for at least six or seven or eight years. Uh, keep it up. It makes your bond sales stand out in the market. And uh, with that, we really recommend you awarding these certificates of obligation to Raymond James. Uh, I want to make sure Jeff Kuhn is introduced. He's your all's bond counsel, has been bond counsel for uh, the shirts for 50 years, if not longer. <laughs> You're not 50 years. Um, but his, his, his boss before that was, was uh, bond counsel for the city. He'll be able to address anything that's in that bond ordinance that you might have, uh, any questions you may have, and I'm happy to address any uh, finance questions regarding these, but again, our recommendation is to award, and it really is an honor to represent the city when we go out to market, because these are highly in demand bonds. Good counsel. Questions? Mr. Larson. 
Well, it's just because I don't know how to read these forms, so hopefully it can be a quick answer. But on the net, what is net interest cost? Because I'm showing some of the bids that have higher rates are showing a lower net interest cost. Um, great question. If, and where he's looking is on, on the second page. We award off of tick, true interest cost, present valuing everything back to today. Uh, net interest cost is the total interest that you're paying less the premium that the purchasers are offering to pay. So they are paying more than what you're, uh, they're, going, they're going to pay more than what you're authorizing. So seven million, we're authorizing seven million nine twenty-five. That's what we bid. Mm -hmm. On this first bid, they paid a premium of 553. So we subtract that from the total interest, because they're going to pay you more than you're actually paying. And in, in doing that, that gives you a net interest cost. So total interest that you'll pay, less the premium that they're paying you. Does that make sense? Or is that clear? Well, I mean, it's clear as mud, but um, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, so, because so, I see that, so we're bonding 7.925, but this here says they're going to give us eight point four seven eight million, and that so that difference is the premium. Is the premium, and what we're doing since you only authorize seven million nine twenty five, we leave in the official statement the ability to reduce the par amount because we cannot put more in your account than what you authorize to the vote or to to the voters in your notice of intention. So that so, goes towards the total interest cost. We will. On, on this calculation, but we will reduce your par amount. We're actually issuing less than seven million nine twenty-five, but we're going to put seven million nine twenty-five into your construction account. Well, and so I guess this is where I'm trying to understand. I don't. I know maybe it's too much of the weeds to get, but so I'm looking at the the winning bid, Raymond James and Associates. So the total interest cost two million four hundred eighty-six thousand and fifty dollars minus the premium because they're going to pay us extra puts us at a net interest cost of one million nine hundred thirty two thousand but if you go to one of the as a higher tick uh the baker group the total interest cost minus the premium it says that the our our actual cost of interest is four thousand dollars less one million nine hundred twenty eight thousand Good. good I, I'm saying exactly what you're saying and where you're going. Those numbers, the tick, you'll see the tick, true interest cost, shows a lower bid interest rate calculation for Raymond James than the NIC. The tick present values those numbers back to today. And that's what we're awarding off of. What's the cheapest financing mechanism? So using true interest cost, we're taking into account in 20 years, those dollars don't mean as much today as so they the do time, today. We're, we're taking out the time value of money based on the premium, but we're not actually seeing the premium. That's just going towards the interest. We are seeing the premium. Time value of interest as well. Okay. So if you have a front loader's law on interest versus the, if, uh, the interest rates, if you'll look at some of these breakdowns, uh, the interest rate can fluctuate year to year, how much we actually pay in, in interest on the coupon. Uh, so depending on how that breaks down, um, it, we could front load more interest or back load more interest. Okay. And then when we discount them back, then it'll affect. So because of when the interest is applied and our accessibility to the capital immediately, we're doing a determination that the true interest cost, even though the actual interest paid will be $4,000 more in the long run, the short-term benefits supersede that? Is that the layman's way of saying that? Is that accurate? Yes. Our benefit is that the, the true cost to us, the actual dollars to us, even though we're paying more, those future dollars are out 20 years from now. The money up front, where it gets, doesn't get discounted back as much, is the benefit of getting it up front. So we're going to get, you know, the, the final numbers are going to, let me grab a different. The final numbers, we're borrowing Seven, you can put that up there. Yeah. And this is going to make it probably a little bit more clear. Okay. I'm happy afterwards to visit or if you want to call. So, so 
or we went out and bid 7925 With that premium, we were able to lower the borrowing amount as soon as we get this. Mr. McLean, you might want to explain the par the par value versus the premium value that you see too. Okay. I'm hoping we'll we'll, okay. we'll be because I think that's where maybe the confusion is coming in. So I think I think just based on what you've said, I might have got I might it might have clicked for me. Because they're giving that premium, we're tech quote borrowing less according to that amount. And that's why there's gonna be those small discrepancies. That that answers my question. All right. Good. Anyone else? So, Mr. Edwards. So Mr. McLean, they're just paying, paying us more for the bond. The bond is typically issued at par, and they're giving us a premium for each bond that we pay for each series that we have out there. Yes. And that comes up with your total net interest. Okay. Here, here it is on this, this chart, um, the sources and uses. So we went out and bid 7925 What we're actually borrowing is 7495 You'll see the net premium of 565, and that's not going to match up exactly to what we had on this bid sheet, because once we lowered the premium, once we lowered the par amount, the premium changed. Okay. But so instead of borrowing 7,925, we borrowed 7,495, and that's what we're going to pay back. Okay. We're going to get that 565 today, and not have to pay that portion back. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. And I'm happy if, if anybody wants to go through the, the bond math, I'd happy to take a phone call at the office. It is something that is quite boring to a lot of people. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and, but I'd be happy to, to take a call on any of this. Anyone else? I'm going to move from the chair to adopt an ordinance authorizing the issuance of City of Shirts, Texas Combination Tax and Limited Pledge Revenue Certificates of Obligation Series 2019. A second. Any other comments, questions from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 So I read the language is exactly printed here. Did I need to add, uh, specify the amounts? Just read what was in red. All right, good. I'm learning. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And we'll work with, with James the next couple of weeks and have the money here in about four weeks. Fantastic. Thank you appreciate it, gentlemen. All right, item number 15, ordinance 19M18, an ordinance by the City Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, amending the City of Shirts Code of Ordinances and certain other ordinances by amending and establishing fees for certain licenses, permits, and other, other services provided by the City of Shirts. This is the first reading. Mr. Walters? Even again, it is time to review uh, the city's annual fee schedule. Uh, I'm actually going to start uh, with an updated report and presentation uh, provided by Wildan. Um, they are a consulting group uh, that uh, reviews the uh, City of Shirts' utility rates and gives us a five-year rate plan, a five-year rate forecast uh, based on what they see in the market, based on how our previous uh, performances and um, uh, we actually have some good news this year for is how the rate plan has changed um, from last year to this year. Um, to give you some facts provided by Will Dan, uh, the average utility has been increasing between five and six per year across the nation. Um, and a lot of the professional organizations expect water rates to triple in the next 15 years. And a lot of those factors are outside uh, the city's influence. Uh, what he found was our uh, utility fund continues to be sound financial condition. Uh, we've been using the long-term rate plan, um, and we're still conducting the annual review to make sure we're not locking ourselves into a higher rate plan than what we require. Um, so you look at the monthly charges inside the city for the five eights, um, we have about twenty-four sixty-one. Uh, these are the base chart or the, the um, base charges uh, going all the way up. Uh, the block charges, uh, currently we've charged $3.04 for every 1,000 gallons of water used up to 6,000 gallons, and after that we have a graduated um, scale, so the more water a uh, resident uses or a business uses, uh, the more and more expensive it becomes. As far as wastewater rates, the current rate, uh, we have a base charge that goes to the City of Shirts, which is the same, a flat dollar amount on, on um, 
all commercial and residential properties. And then we have two per thousand gallon rates. They're uh, separated into a line maintenance fee, which goes to the city of Schertz to take care of the sewer lines uh, from the resident, uh, um, residence or uh, place of business um, back to the treatment center. And then we have a charge for treatment, which we base our citywide charge based on the CCMA, who is the largest uh, sewer provider, sewer treatment provider we have of 380, uh, 383. So based on the um, water usage during the winter averaging, um, we charge $4.32 combined per thousand gallons of water used. Um, and then in, in very rare circumstances, if more than 12,000 gallons are used, um, that uh, dollar amount more than doubles to 937. We don't have any resident that pays that or any gets where near close to that. That's just sort of a, a tick we have on there. Uh, so if we look at the water and wastewater rate comparison at 10,000 gallons of water and 8,000 gallons of wastewater, um, uh, those are higher than what the shirts average is. Our average wastewater is about 4,700 and our water is closer to 6,000 to 8,000. Um, so this is a little bit inflated, but it's, it's easy to compare across multiple entities uh, using those um, uh, estimators. So if someone insures to use this uh, water and this wastewater, um, you'd see their bill be $102. Uh, these are some other entities in the area uh, that we compared ourselves against. Bernie's uh, much higher at $150. Um, you know, San Antonio, uh, they have a much wider base to spread their costs over, uh, so they have a lower on, but you look at Seguin, Cibolo, San Angelo, other cities around us in, in comparative size, and you'll see we're still right in the middle of uh, where we are in our, on our I-35 corridor. Uh, sort of a distribution of all of our accounts, we have about 14,500 accounts, 13,000 are um, 5 8 inch, which is the vast majority of our residential houses. So part of the driver for revenue is we get new houses. Those houses buy more water. Um, so that drives sort of our revenue forecasting. Uh, you'll see in 2013, we had 12,679 um, uh, water accounts. In 2020, we have 14,567. And if we tend that trend up, that is what was going into the model, assuming that we'd uh, continue on that development trend. Um, last year, we actually thought, we actually trended up to 17,555 this year. Uh, we lowered that estimate by a little bit, 14,403, so a minor change there. That will still affect our, our rate structure. Uh, just graphically, if you want to see the distribution of the different um, meter sizes in the city, you know, three-fourths is red as residential meters. Uh, you'll notice on our water build consumption, um, these are uh, honestly relatively flat. We've used uh, very little extra water in the past uh, eight years or so. Um, even though we have been growing, uh, water consumption across the area has decreased um, due to new uh, low flow infrastructure uh, and, and faucets, as well as uh, we've had some rainy years, haven't had a drought in a while, and so when you see droughts or uh, uh, dry spells, uh, water consumption will tend to increase during those years. Um, so we still have a little bit of increased forecasted going forward as we continue to grow, it can't shrink forever. Um, again, this is the 5 8 inch. We bought 7,000 gallons of water, is what the average uh, bill is for us uh, on the water side uh, on our normal residence. Um, this is another uh, slide we have currently. We have the um, SSLGC provides us water uh, through their Gonzales wells. And uh, as you know, we'll, part of the big uh, conversation is we'll be opening a new well site and new treatment center. Uh, pulling from uh, Guadalupe wells. Um, we've already issued all those funds and so are the planning and engineering and, and hopefully construction will be on uh, underway along with the parallel pipeline to help get that water to us. Um, the model suggests that it's probably likely will take, uh, once that plant comes online in 2023, uh, shirts will start splitting where it gets water um, and the red will be from Guadalupe and the blue will be from the um, Gonzales. We have water rights to both and we'll see how uh, relationships work out with Seguin and SSLGC is uh, what's the best combination of water uh, from each source um, will be. Um, just in general uh, assumptions, no new significant personnel additions, um, 
Uh, biggest impacts on the rate is, of course, the SSLGC, who we buy our water from, and CCMA, who treat our wastewater. Um, and then just general operating expenses expect to go about 3% a year, which is relatively in line with inflation. Uh, so last year, um, oh, so this is just another breakdown of what it costs us per thousand gallons at each of, the, each of those sites. So on Gonzales, we're paying $1.64, $1.67, $1.70. Uh, when Guadalupe comes online, it's more expensive. Um, we don't have a lot of takers of water right now, so it means whoever's buying the water is going to be eating more of the cost, at least in the beginning or until we can get some more users on. Um, and Shirts is bearing the brunt of the Guadalupe water, so it may behoove us to start buying more and more from Guadalupe than Gonzales when that comes on. Um, and below you'll see this uh, CCMA projected um, their user fee, their per thousand gallon fee, going from three, um, projected next year to be 393 and then going up, which we take into account. Um, as far as our bond CIP for water and sewer fund, we only have about $6.5 million that we're eyeing next year uh, that went into the model. And this is for the utility relocations on all 15, 18, and then um, 2252. So both of those are TxDOT driven, so they want to do road work, road improvements, and to do that we need to move our lines. Uh, that wasn't something that was originally in our radar. Uh, we, don't, we didn't plan for it in our uh, fund balance capital recovery, so this is why we're recommending uh, debt unless something else uh, comes along that either needs to delay or find another funding source. Um, general forecast, I'm going to move a little bit quicker, but we have this and it's in your packet. Um, one of the things that uh, um, when we first started this process, was we found out that the water rates were subsidizing sewer rates. So we're bringing in more and water than we needed, and then the, uh, the wastewater um, was basically not paying for itself. Uh, so one thing we set out to do uh, about five, five or so years ago was to bring up the sewer rates so the sewer uh, revenues were paying for sewer services, and then water revenue was paying for water services. Um, in the model that we looked at, we have about uh, two more years. This next year, that we're about to approve in one more year of um, rate increases on the sewer before we finally hit that mark and sewer will be paying 100% for itself. Um, notes for the upcoming, this is some of the changes that we had. Uh, this year's adjustment is different um, than what we had last year. Uh, one big change is in the water. They're uh, saying right now we don't need to do any rate increases on uh, water service this year. So we've hit a mark and if we don't do any increases, um, we'll still be fine, so we'll be able to pay for all the capital projects we have coming up, and there's no reason to do an increase this year for water. Um, race water, we decided to go nominally higher on the wastewater. Instead of doing 7% increase, we go 8%, and it's about 20 cents on the average home in the city of Schertz. Uh, it'll help us get that much closer to making the water, uh, well, sorry, wastewater um, pay for itself. So what does that look like? Um, these are the uh, actual charges that'll change. I noticed that water, no changes, and then uh, sewer rates will, will uh, move up um, just a little bit. And what does that mean for uh, our citizens? Uh, it means five eighths at 5,000 water, 5,000 wastewater. It'd be a dollar seventy. 10,000 gallons of water, 5,000 of wastewater, dollar seventy. Uh, if we went back to the 7%, it'd be a dollar fifty ish. So we're talking about 20 cents a month and get us a little bit closer to that. Um, after this year, the, the model does call. Uh, recommend for about 3% increases on water, and then the uh, sewer will drop from 8% increases to 5% down to 3%. Um, so we're almost there, and they'll match up and should, after that, follow uh, the CIP as far as operating expenses go. And we'll continue to evaluate this every year, so if something changes in the model like it did this year, um, we don't have to stick to it and, and raise rates when it doesn't make sense to. Um, so that was the summary on the water and wastewater. Um, before we go on, that's sort of the, the largest impact of the uh, fee schedule changes that are proposed. Um, I can move forward with the other ones and give a brief summary of what else we're doing, or if there's any questions, uh, I can try to answer them as far as the water and sewer rates are concerned. Council questions for Mr. Walters? Here's there are none. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 19M18? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Larson, a second from Mr. Edwards. Any comments, questions from Council? Hearing none, I'm going to call for a vote. Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Six ayes and no nays. Every time earlier when I said seven ayes and no nays, I was miscounting. Because I'm over 50 now. <laughs> so every, each time, I meant six ayes and no nays. And that'll be a fun video to watch a few years from now and say, gosh, I was still smart then. All right. Uh, next item that we have coming up, item number 16, which is Ordinance 19S. 19, which is also set as a public hearing. Um, so what we, I'll do is I'll read the caption. The staff will make a presentation. I'll open the public hearing. When the public has uh, had their opportunity to address the council, I will close the public hearing, open it up to council, uh, and we'll address the uh, disposition of the item afterward. So this is item number 16, Ordinance 19S19, an ordinance by the City Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, amending the official zoning map by rezoning approximately six-tenths of an acre of land from single-family residential district R2 to Main Street Mixed Use District, or MSMU, and this is first reading. Good evening. Good evening. So to get your bearings, this is Main Street, William Street, and Exchange, and it, the subject property is outlined here in green. Currently, there is one residential structure um, in this portion, and then the rest of this is vacant, undeveloped area. On June 14th, 23 public hearing notices were mailed out to the property owners within 200 feet. We have received one opposed and two neutral to, which you can see on this map here. And then on July 8th, the public hearing notice for tonight was published in the San Antonio Express News. This map shows our, the current zoning on the property, which is the single family residential R2, and then the proposed Main Street mixed use. You can see that on three sides of the property, um, it is surrounded by right of way. And then on the adjacent property, it is the single family residential R2. This map shows um, a portion of the comprehensive land use plan. The subject property is shown by the red star, um, which is identified as Main Street commercial. So the proposed rezone is generally in conformance with the goals and objectives of the comp plan. Um, in particular, the proposed zone change will provide for either the single family or the light commercial, which is identified as desired along Main Street in the Main Street mixed use area. The request should have a minimal impact on the existing water and wastewater. And the comprehensive land use plan does identify this area as historic downtown shirts. Um, which is intended to leverage Schertz's history and heritage to create a unique destination with local um, independent businesses. And the applicant has shared the desire to want to do kind of a cottage, um, cottage residential development, which they'll provide more information on in um, a presentation they would like to make. So based on the request to rezone the property from single family um, residential district R2 to Main Street mixed use to allow for single family residential or low intensity commercial um, land uses that are allowed in the Main Street mixed use, the um, city staff is making a recommendation based on the surrounding land uses, the compatibility with those la land uses, and the direct reflection in the comprehensive land use plan to have this as Main Street mixed use. The Planning and, Zone, Planning and Zoning Commission did conduct a public hearing on June 26th and offered a recommendation of approval um, by a unanimous vote. And as I mentioned, the applicant would like to make a brief presentation if allowed. Yeah, if it's staff's recommendation to allow them to do that, then certainly. I'm Steve, Steve Bacon at 3589 Peachtree Lane in uh, Carolina Crossing here. Uh, we're a, my wife and I are uh, longtime builders and developers from uh, Tennessee. I've been on a project for five years in Tennessee that's ending, so uh, we're looking at uh, starting uh, doing some building and developing. And our, our history has been doing infill cottages development. So we looked at this lot and we thought it might be a good location to build some of these infill cottages. Uh, we're targeting. How do you scroll that down? Uh, price points 190 to 215. So we sort of define that as workhorse housing, work house, uh, uh, workforce housing, uh, cottage style built close to the street. Uh, walkability is important. We have already done the flood certifications. We are three feet below the flood, so we're going to have to raise the house. Uh, one foot above the flood, so we are. We know we have to take it four feet up. Basically, we're looking at doing the Main Street mixed use, so we can get our 50 by 100 foot lots. 
uh, landscaping proposed. We know that on the uh, on the foundation. Uh, we want to do a hardy plank. Uh, we're big on front porches. We want to renovate the existing cottage on Exchange Street. This is just an example. This is one of the house plans that we're looking at building on Main Street. It's 1,268 feet. Two bedroom, two bath. Corner of Williams, we would propose doing a 1,400 square foot house when we go into the Planning Commission. And then on Exchange Street, we are looking at a house that's 1,471 square feet. So, uh, We've done cottage uh, development in Tennessee, back in East Tennessee for years. We did a neighborhood that we would like to take some of the characteristics that we did and, uh, and build here in shirts. Again, we're on the we're front porches and close to the street. Walkability is what we've, uh, what we've been about. And that's it. So uh, I'm here, I'd be glad to answer any questions from Okay, good. What I'll do is um, go ahead and open the uh, public hearing, and after the public hearing is closed, we'll open it up to council and see if they have any questions. So at this time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Anybody that would like to address the council on this matter may do so. We'd ask that you state your name and your address for uh, the city secretary if you decide to come up and speak. It appears I have no takers. Given that, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time and uh, open up to council. Mr. Edwards? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I would like to ask a couple of questions. Um, I know you're looking at the residential aspect of it, but um, have you considered making it maybe a commercial aspect as well or maybe a mixed use other than that? We have, uh, and that's what I've been doing for the last five years is commercial. Uh, and we're open to it. Absolutely, and we would want this Main Street mixed use zone because of the flexibility that it gives us. So, of course, the commercial would come with a higher grade of, of construction as well. Um, have you thought about pre-selling versus trying to go out and just build a model? Do, do what now? Pre-selling the homes? We've already been approached by several people already, but so we think we think. Me. And I think we've been talking to some realtors that we think we'll have a chance, though. So it's a tur turnkey, huh? We think we'll pre-sell them. The banks gotcha. like that, too. So. Thank you. And, and good luck. I just want to say, you know, any, any efforts that we can make at uh, more affordable housing in the area, as well as, you know, revitalizing our Main Street areas, I think it's always positive. So uh, very good ideas. My only question is where in East Tennessee were you? In God's country, up in East, uh, up in the Tri Cities uh, near North Carolina and Virginia, we were in a town of four thousand people, which is the oldest town, Jonesboro. Yep. I see Not far from where they attempted to formulate the state of Franklin. We were yeah, absolutely we were the capital of the state of Franklin. Uh huh. Yeah. See me after. Okay. <laughs> About half my family is from right up there. Um, council, anything else? If not, then I'm going to move from the chair that we approve Ordinance 19S19. Second. I have a second from Mr. Davis. I'll go ahead and call for a vote. Aye. 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 Six ayes and no nays. Motion carries. All right. Uh, next thing we have on the agenda is roll call vote confirmation. The first is consent. Items one through three, five. 7 through 13. Motion made from the chair, seconded by Council Member Edwards, Mayor Pro Tem Hayward, and Council Members Davis Gutierrez, Larson, Edwards, and Brown voted yes. Motion passed. Item number four, resolution 19R89. Motion made by Council Member Larson, seconded by Edwards. Council Member Edwards, um, Mayor Pro Tem Hayward, and Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Edwards, and Brown voted yes. Motion passed. Next is item six, resolution 19R90. Motion was made by Council Member Edwards, seconded by Council Member Gutierrez. Mayor Pro Tem Hayward voted yes. Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, and Brown voted yes. Motion passed. 
Item 14, ordinance number 19B, 17 first and final reading. Motion made from the chair, seconded by Council Member Edwards. Mayor Pro Tem Hayward voted yes. Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Edwards, and Brown voted yes. Motion passed. Item number 15, ordinance num number 19M, 18 first reading. Council Member Larson made the motion, seconded by Council Member Edwards. Mayor Pro Tem Hayward and Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Edwards, and Brown vote, voted yes, motion passed. Item number 16, ordinance number 19S, 19. First reading, motion made from the chair, seconded by Council Member Davis, Mayor Pro Tem Hayward, and Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Edwards, and Brown voted yes, motion passed. And finally, item number seven, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hadn't got there yet. <laughs> That's a maybe, sorry. Very good, thank you. Next item we have on the agenda this evening is workshops, discussion, and consideration uh, and or action regarding the confirmation, appointment, or election of the Mayor Pro Tem. Council, is there uh, anyone that, that objects to us continue in, our, in our, our current process where we do rotation every six months in February and August or close thereon? I don't see that there's any objection. In that case, is there any objection to us uh, going forward this evening and uh, um, Swearing in a, a new mayor pro tem in the next in the rotation. Everybody's good. Um, then I'm going to make a motion from the chair that we uh, appoint Councilman Brown as the mayor pro tem for the next six months. Second. We have the second from uh, Mr. Edwards. Any other comments on that before we start? I'll comment before I call for a vote. Uh, mayor pro tem Hayward, thank you for serving. Uh, we relied on you a number of times to run meetings for us, to go to meetings out in the community and out in the region when I wasn't able to be there. I think you did a fantastic job. And I really do appreciate the work that you put in for us. So well done, well done. All right, I'll call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. 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 Five ayes and one abstention, which is recorded officially as a no. Um, we may want to look. We may want to look at changing that rule. Um, however, the majority has won. So uh, why don't I meet you down here at the podium and, despite your objection, swear you in. Uh, Mayor, um, yes, is that, we're going to swear in tonight. Well, we can we can do that next meeting. It's entirely up to you, Council. Tradition has been that we would swear in the mayor pro tem at the next meeting. Is that what we should do? Everybody in agreement? Nodding heads. Mayor, remember you're going to be, you will not be at the next meeting, so it will have to be the third. Mayor pro tem Hayward will swear in her successor. It'll be okay. great. <laughs> <laughs> It'll Got be it. A fantastic photo opportunity for both of them. All right. In that case, um, a roll call vote confirmation for number 17. Okay, number 17, the workshop, a motion made from the chair, seconded by Council Member Edwards. Mayor Pro Tem Hayward voted yes. Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Edward voted yes. And Council Member Brown abstained, motion passed. All right, very good. So that'll be on, uh, I believe, uh, August 2nd? August 6th. That's so far down the road, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, next up, requests and announcements. And first, announcements by the city manager. Anything tonight, Dr. Brown? No, nothing tonight. Very good. Request by the mayor and council members that items be placed on a future council agenda, something we need to address. It's not already on an agenda. We'll move to announcements by the mayor and council members and start with Mayor Pro Tem Hayward. Uh, mayor, I attended the Texas, the um, city manager's uh, luncheon for yes. Region 8. Um, it was a legislative wrap up, but then it, what it showed me is how much effort they actually put into making those laws viable for us as a city. And I want to appreciate, say thank you to both of our, to all of our city managers, the city manager and assistant city managers for a job well done. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Davis? Nothing, sir. Mr. Gutierrez? A couple of things. Uh, attended budget workshop. Very interesting information concerning uh, Senate Bill 2. Uh, also had breakfast with the Shirts Police Department. Uh, what a great turnout that we had there, uh, you know, having breakfast with them. Uh, ribbon cutting ceremony for TJ Family Clinic. Thank you for serving our community. Uh, chamber luncheon and also attended the uh, TCMA regional meeting. Uh, 
well job putting that together. Got a lot of compliments from the other city managers. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Larson. Nothing. Nothing, Mr. sir. Edwards, no. Mr. Brown. And attended the uh, TCMA. It's always nice to show off shirts with a new facility like that. Everybody seems to like it a lot. Uh, other than that, nothing else. Very good. Well, if there's nothing else from council or from staff, then uh, we stand adjourned.